Hi, this is Ruth Guggenheim with GPS for the Jewish Soul. Welcome back. And we're so happy to have Rifka Malka Perman of WOW from Baltimore, Maryland joining us today. Rifka, thank you again for being with us. My pleasure. You love look it. magnificent. I always love, you know, you dress so oh, gorgeously. The <laughs> it's great, yeah. So, you know what? I wanted to talk about today how, how do we perceive God? You know, is God our parent? Is God our mother? Is God our father? How do we envision God? How do, you know, can, can yeah. you help me on that one? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, I think sometimes this is what I think about, this amazing fact that God is different for you than he is for me. How so? I just, I've never peeked into your brain, Ruth, but I know that our relationship with God is individual. But sometimes, and I think this is what your question is asking, how do we step out of that God is the man in the sky versus that God is my loving father, my loving mother, my best friend, and all those other things that he is. God is my creator. God is the one who believes in me. Hmm. You know, what you're saying reminds me, uh, as a parent, of what the idea of unconditional love is. You know, yeah. there, there are times as a parent that I could murder my children, you know, <laughs> but. I love them more than anything in the world. And I, I sometimes wonder if when I became a parent, if that didn't give me a, a view into yeah. God, in, mm. into what it must mean to be a parent, a, a loving God that loves us as his children. Yeah, 100% there no matter what, even when your kid is infuriating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I once heard a rabbi say this amazing thing. He actually showed a you know, picture on the wall of Michelangelo's depiction of God, the biggest disservice that has been done. And there's so many afterwards. He showed all these comics, you know, from the New York Times, you know, magazine and the New mm -hmm. Yorker, and all these depictions of God as the man in the sky and an angry man with ripped biceps. And he's probably pointing his finger and he's about to strike with lightning. And, you know, who? We can't relate to God like that, and I don't think that that's accurate either. I mean, is that the man who made the flowers grow? You know, not just that. Yeah. You're right about Michelangelo. It's also, you know, many people aren't aware that in Judaism, in the Torah, mm -hmm. in the Bible, there is a totally feminine attribute of God, and it's the Hebrew word Shekhinah. Mm -hmm. And Shekhinah, which is Hebrew and used numerous times throughout Jewish scripture, is the presence of God in mm -hmm. the feminine. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. our mother. Yeah. Our, our, you know, a mother our gives nurturer. unconditional love. It's not always about discipline. It's unconditional love. And knowing that no matter what we do, yeah. God is always there for us. Yeah. Yeah, I think we miss that a lot. It reminds me, uh, my husband and I, we love to watch the Olympics. Mm. You know, we just, I don't know, that's our, we love it. Olympics time comes. So especially, especially some of the gymnastics, crazy stuff. So you have this guy and he's out there and he's doing flip, 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 and he does an incredible job. And then some of these foreign countries, the coach looks at him and gives him like a little nod, like, you know, like my husband says, if you don't get 10 points, we're going to kill your whole family. You know, like something, it's so right. scary, like perform, be your, be the best or, or you're, or you're not good for anything. Then you have these American athletes. This is, you know, meaning no disrespect to any other countries. We just, you know, we like the American athletes and they do their flips and their coaches, no matter what they do, their coaches give them a hug. Their coaches smile at them. Their coaches give them a pat on the back. That to me is, that's God right there. He's encouraging us. He does want us to be the best people we can be. He does have expectations of us. And yet, no matter what, we're going to get that hug at the end. It's unconditional. You know, you remind me of yeah. one of the Hebrew scriptures, Shir HaShirim, Song yeah. of Songs, which was written by King Solomon, which so much depicts the, the relationship, almost like between a like you know, our spouse, yeah. like like a truly yeah. the most intimate relationship that you cannot get closer to anything mm -hmm. than God. And that, you know, th there are times I think we're all down, we're down in the dumps, we're down in the, in, you know, totally. Yeah. And when we call out, when we call out from our hearts and our soul, yeah. we, I really do think God hears us. Just like yeah. a parent, you know, have you ever been where you kind of wake up out of a horrible nightmare and you hear your kids and you go running? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, and it's, it's true what you're saying. And sometimes if you look in the Torah and how Jewish tradition is, we have this thing called Shabbos. Every week, Shabbos. Now, not only good Jews get to keep Shabbos. There's no such thing as a bad Jew, but no matter what you do, every week God wants you at his table. Every week he says, come mm. on, let's do dinner together. Let's light the candles, let's have a glass of wine. Let a husband and wife have a romantic day. Every week let's renew this relationship, no matter where we've been during the week. Shabbos comes, and that's a gift. 
I think that speaks to this relationship that you're talking about. A true gift from God to us, yeah. his children. Yeah. Rivka Malka, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure. And thank you mm. for joining us at GPS for the Jewish Soul.